Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Today, we're going to get a little bit spooky. And no, I'm not just talking about all these tabs I have open. <laughs> we're actually going to talk about this ES-335. It's just a basic Cherry 335. Why am I doing a rock or not segment on this thing? Oh, wait a minute. Wait, uh, zoom in here a little bit. It's time to get spooked. Because this instrument has a bunch of spooky, scary skeleton skulls on here. <laughs> okay, so this was apparently a limited edition in 2012. And I mean, there's not a lot for me to talk about this except for this unique finish. You've got skulls all around the front of this guitar. You can see a large one right here. You get a small one. And I really like how they just varied it up because there's a gigantic one here. They got different profiles looking to the left and to the right. I think that's truly what makes this finish, you know, slightly appealing. Because normally I'm not a big, you know, skull crossbones type of guy. But this finish, due to the way that it's very artistic and tasteful in the way that it was done, I would buy one of these if the price was right. I mean, you got this one looking straight on, this one looking all the way over here. It's not quite clear to me how they did this. Maybe they had somebody do an airbrushing. But unfortunately, the history of this one's kind of been lost to time. But not only did they do it for the front, they also did it for the back side of the guitar. And it appears that the paint that they used for that has a tendency to disappear at certain angles and reappear at others. As you look at it here, you can hardly even tell it's different from a regular ES-335. It's almost like it's got some finish issues or maybe like some flame figuring. But then from this angle, you start to see them. So they're just here to pop out and spook ya. But even more, it appears they went as far as putting them on the side too. Are they on the neck? We don't have any really good photos of that, but I would be willing to guess that they are there because if we take a look at the back of the headstock, we've got like a giant skull right here. And then we also have this. I'm not really sure the significance of that, but it appears to be a guitar pick and then you've got the Gibson headstock right inside of there. But this was a limited edition in 2012 and they did 20 of them worldwide. Now these photos, that's the old style of Sweetwater. Here we can see one of the photos that still has their watermark on it. But in doing research for this guitar, it was really hard to really find anything. Like this one looks so much more menacing, but it's got original Schaller tuners on here. It actually has a serial number, unlike this other one. So it makes me wonder, have they actually done more than one run? Maybe it wasn't just this 2012 run. But hey, this guy actually got some good photos of the sides. So I might not have all the answers for this particular 335. I mean, heck, look at that fretboard. That's gorgeous. And you get the block inlays instead of dots if you like that. And the frets appear to be really tall on that. But it appears most of these ended up overseas. Like, so maybe Sweetwater got one or two. And all the other ones, they probably just scattered them across the world. Like, this one was for sale in Sweden. That was three years ago. But what surprised me even more is apparently there's at least one of them out there that actually has P90 pickups with this unique skull finish. And as far as how much these things originally cost, I couldn't find it today. However, if you need one of these in time for Halloween, I mean, it's going to be cutting it close if it makes it to here or not. Depends on how fast this guy can ship it out. He has it available for $4,700 and $100 shipping. So how much of a premium does he want there? It appears other people are asking around $3,000 for similar 335s. That seems a little bit high. So I'd hazard to guess this has about a $2,000 premium built on it for the finish. I mean, in my opinion, I think it's almost worth it because I have never seen Gibson do anything like this again. But maybe my eyes just haven't been open to it. So I'm very curious to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on the Skull 335. Do you guys dig it? Do you think it's worth paying a premium for? Would you add it to your collection? Or is this one that you just bring out every late October because of the whole theme? I guess if you really love this and you don't want to pay $2,000, you could take pretty much any Gibson to any artist that could just spray skulls on your guitar anyways. It would definitely be cheaper than the premium that you pay for this, but then it would not be factory original. And speaking of factory original crazy paint jobs, check out this other 335 we need to talk about today. From a similar era, 2014, check out the mustache. 
Oh boy, this thing made its rounds on Instagram, that's for sure. Okay, so we got a 335 that just has so many colors on it. You get kind of a dark reddish color here that moves on to the Barney purple that you'd find on like the early 90s limited colors edition Les Paul standard. But then peculiar enough, you get this blue stripe that overlaps that stripe. So you kind of get a second stripe forming there. And then they repeat that pattern, red, purple, blue. And then we get a random light blue. Then we switch over to our colors to kind of a, a yellowish brown and then a ketchup color. Brown again, you kind of get some green going on, then yellow, and then just a big mustard. So we've got so many different colors going on here. And then a, a random white mustache. I I don't understand it. I thought it was kind of funny. Some of the uh, Instagram comments were saying what they thought this made them look like. Like one guy thought it looked like a guy from the Beatles. I think somebody tagged Robert Baker and said, hey, that's your hair. <laughs> it's just such a... A strange guitar here. And then the sides are this light purple pinkish hue. Then you get the cream binding here. But what made me actually want to talk about this guitar is I love the headstock. That pure crisp white color. It really contrasts against everything else and it matches the mustache. So I don't think we know who custom ordered this and why. But there's certainly a lot of things that this could represent, but you know, it, it's something crazy to talk about, that's for sure. But then you get to the back. I thought this was just insane. I thought we would have a similar stripe ed colored type thing going on. But no, they chose all Barney purple, even the neck. But the neck appears to be a slightly darker shade. Honestly, I don't know how to feel about this guitar. I personally would not be interested in purchasing it. And it does have a serial number, a little bit hard to read, but it is there. Okay, in this photo, it's not so hard to read, but apparently this is a true custom ordered one off. I really want to interview the guy that had to do this paint job because it could not have been easy. I'm not a professional guitar painter, but I would imagine that they would have to mask off each section and then spray what they want to do, but then slightly off mask it so you kind of get the blending of the colors in between each of them. That had to have been rather labor intensive. I would hate to see the custom shop bill on this. They probably doubled the price of this thing just because of all the steps that they had to take to get the finish right. Or I guess maybe they could have took the spray brush and just had like a piece of plastic or something to cover over some of it. That way they get kind of a straight line. I mean, no matter what, it'd probably be slightly difficult to do in nitro. That's just crazy. And what's it listed at? Oh my goodness, 12,000. $326.03 and it's coming from Italy. So maybe it was like used at a festival or something over in Italy. Our spooky skull guitars, it's expensive, but I understand it. This one, unfortunately, I just gotta say that price is just as insane as the finish. <laughs> I hate talking bad about listings, but even if it was discounted down to 4,000, I, I still think they would have a hard time selling it. But for our playing demo today, let's go ahead and check out a Skull ES-335 with P90 pickups. Hey, it looks like we actually stumbled upon the original price of these anyways. So 278,000 yen, approximately 2,780 bucks. So I would say within the States, it was probably anywhere between 2,500 to $3,000. I believe the only thing hurting the value of these is not enough people know about them. So who knows, maybe this video will change that. The dual dog ear P90s look spookier, but maybe they could have went with like a bone white color for the plastic covers instead of black. The only question left, would you rock the mustache or the skulls? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.